So, you want to learn how to make Roblox animations like me, do you? Yay! Well, I suppose it's been a long time coming. This is something that I've gotten requests for all the time, and now, I finally decided to do it. Allow me to teach you all my personal style of Roblox stop motion animation. Before we begin, I just want to say, I don't think my personal style is good. I think there are better options for high quality Roblox animation. However, when it boils down to it, this style is also very easy to replicate. So while you're sacrificing quality, you're definitely getting things done easier. That said, if this style somehow becomes super popular and begins to garner hate because of me, just know I wasn't that proud of this style to begin with. Let's begin with the software that you'll need. For the free stuff, you'll obviously need Roblox Studio, which you should have if you've ever played Roblox at least once. You will also need some software that you can take screenshots with. That way you can capture the many frames of animation you'll be taking. I personally use Bandicam. While you need to purchase banding cam for recording without any watermarks, screenshots are safe from a watermark entirely, license or no license. You could use Roblox Studio's screenshot feature to capture your frames, but I find this unreliable because you can't change the destination path of where your screenshots will go. Any recording or screenshot software should allow you to change your file destination just fine. For a good program for gathering audio, I recommend YouTube DLG. Not only can it download music and sound effects, but it can also download videos. This is useful for getting footage, special effects, and green screens. For an actual editing program, use something that allows you to set the duration of images to single digits and has multiple layers for video and audio. For this tutorial, I will be using Wondershare Filmora. This program, without any watermark, costs about $80 for a perpetual plan. On sale. There is a free version, but you will get watermarked if you use it. Hey, I didn't say doing this was free. Lastly, if for whatever reason you want to record gameplay footage, I recommend OBS. It's free and not that hard to set up. Let's start getting character models. You can get character models from the toolbox or catalog if you don't want to make your own stuff. But, there's two ways to create your own characters. The first way is to use a load character plugin. Put in a person's at username into this plugin and you will be able to insert their avatar. A trick you can try is to change your own avatar for different characters. The second way is to insert shirt and pants objects into a humanoid model, then copy and paste the appropriate clothing URLs into their IDs. Of course, you can also change a character's body colors, either using the body colors object or by using the parts color on the top. For accessories, you can search for them on the catalog, then see if they're in the toolbox, and put them in from there. If you can't find those accessories in the toolbox, try pulling them from your avatar. If you create an outfit that you like, I'd recommend actually buying that outfit in the catalog as some sort of extra safety precaution, just in case you want to try it out in gameplay or something. Now, let's capture some frames. Here in Roblox Studio, we have a character and a map, two very essential things for Roblox animation. Anyway, to set up your screenshot software, I'd recommend using a square on the screen mode instead of a game recording mode. This is to avoid problems with the software we're trying to record. With a game recording mode, either it'll screenshot the entire game screen, or it'll try to screenshot the entire Roblox Studio window. Not very good. I'd also recommend trying to keep your aspect ratio consistent, so adjust the different windows of Roblox Studio as much as you need. For animating any sort of movement, you will be moving the characters by a few studs. How smooth the animation will look along with how fast the characters will move will depend on how many studs you'll be moving by. One stud is fairly decent for both smoothness and character speed, but if you want characters to move faster, try two or more. If you want the animation to look smooth, try something around 0.5 studs. Just note, you'll be taking a lot more frames with lower studs. With the stud system out of the way, let's actually animate some character movement. Move the character along by dragging them with the arrows. For each space that you move them by, take a screenshot with your screenshot program until you get them to where you want them to be. I recommend putting a hotkey for your screenshots. Alright, let's start taking these frames.
that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's the exact same thing for rotating and for changing facial expressions. It's all about taking a screenshot for every bit of movement or change you make on a character or model. There are times where you may want to make a loop of animation, usually for stuff like Roblox effects. For this flame, we're going to take 10 screenshots back to back so we can make a seamless loop when we get to editing. We're going to start capturing shots now. And that's it. To a lesser extent, you do the same thing for a character talking animation, but only for around 2 frames or so. For loops that require more frames, you could also simply record it so you don't have to deal with having to deal with so many screenshots. Just remember, if this with Bandicam, you'll need to buy a license so you don't get that ugly watermark. I also wouldn't recommend going from images to a recording in the same camera angle. It tends to do weird things with the shading. Now, as most people know, I almost never made actual walk cycles for my characters and sort of just had them slide across the ground. I actually made a few walk cycles recently on my latest episode of R Blocks, but almost nobody noticed it. If I were to make more Riot Blocks videos, I'd probably start putting in more walk cycles. So with that being said, the Riot Blocks walk cycle has three parts to it. Two of them involve having the characters swinging their arms and legs about, while the other part has them in a neutral position. For the arm swinging phase, you'll need to take an even number of screenshots of your character moving. The neutral phase will have half the amount of screenshots taken. For this example, our swinging phase will have 6 shots, meaning the neutral phase will have 3 shots. Here we are setting up our character's first swinging phase, and now we will move them 6 spaces, 1 stud each. Now we'll reset our character's limbs so they can be in the neutral phase. Half of 6 is 3, so we will take 3 neutral shots. And now, the character will go in the other arm swinging phase. Their arms should swing in the opposite direction than the last arm swinging phase they were in. If you can't remember which direction the limbs are supposed to be going, you can always look back at your screenshots to see the previous phase. Now that we set up our character in the next swinging phase, we will take 6 screenshots. Then after that, it's back to the neutral phase. And then after that, it's back to the first arm swinging phase. Rinse and repeat the process until the character is where you want them to be. If you want the walk animation to be slower, just increase the number of frames you'll be taking in the arm swinging phase. Just remember, it has to be an even number and the neutral phase needs to have half as many screenshots. And also, make sure you can keep count. Now, let's start actually editing your screenshots. One thing I want to say first, if it's applicable for your program, try to change your frame rate to 60 FPS. Let's enter our shots of our character moving. Let's drag in a single frame of Moss standing here just so we can have some preparation for him to move. So, what exactly can you do with this one image? Quite a few things, actually. One of the more obvious things is change the duration of the image. Maybe give it some effects. But you could also crop it and have it zoom in in a certain part of the image. Not only that, but you could also apply a zoom in as well. A little trick you can do with pan and zoom is to have one version of the image be perfectly still, copy and paste that same image, and apply the pan and zoom to that one. That way, you can have the camera be still for a second before deciding to zoom in. On top of that, you can keep the zoom where it is if you copy the image that had the pan and zoom. So with the pan and zoom image copy and pasted, we can open up the crop and zoom menu, reverse the start and end point, and go to crop. Now, the image is focused on that zoom. So if we look at our preview, it's now staying in that zoom. But enough about that, let's actually make some movement. Select all the frames of the character moving and then put them in. Next, change their duration to only a few frames per second. I usually do 2 frames per second. Then, put in the shot of the character not moving. That way, it will look like the character stopped moving. Let's see it in action. Pretty easy. 
If you want character to zoom by pretty quickly, I recommend changing the shots to 1 frame per second. Again, I think 2 is a good balance. 3 or 4 frames per second is okay if you want the character to move a bit slowly, but do know it does look kinda choppy. For looped animations, grab all the screenshots of the animation you need and set them to 2 frames per second. Copy and paste them over and over again for as long as how you like the loop to last. I recommend keeping your frames per second to always be 2 for loops. 1 frame per second doesn't look the best on some devices. I should have brought this up earlier, but one thing you should keep in mind when animating, as well as editing, are some of the principles of animation. Or at least, these two things. One, give your viewer time to process what's going on. If things happen too quickly, they won't be able to tell what's happening, so let things rest for a second or few. Two, give your animation some buildup. Allow things to wind up before taking off. It's all about speed and timing. Putting images and text over your video should be pretty simple. Inserting an image is as simple as dragging it into a new layer above the video and putting it where you want. It's just as easy with text. Be aware though that editing programs usually have many different types of captions available. Just stick to whatever is plain and basic. Once you insert this text, you're free to put it wherever and edit the font, color, size, etc. A couple of editing programs include keyframing, where you can move an image from point A to point B, among other things like rotating and changing the size. Keyframing involves setting up a keyframe where an animation starts, and another keyframe for where it ends. In this example, I set this image to start up off screen, and then move it downwards. Some programs don't allow you to give keyframes to text, unfortunately. If this is the case with your program, you can create the text caption in an image editing software and export it as an image with a transparent background. Once that's done, you can enter it and keyframe it just like any other image. Some programs have a motion tracker, where you can have an image or caption accurately follow something on a video, but I don't find this very useful for stop motion animation. I guess you can use it to put a character's face over a meme or something. Music and sound effects are pretty simple too. Just drag them in and drop them below the video images. Not much else to say, just make sure you have a decent audio balance. In my opinion, the sound effects should be louder than the music. To put in a green screen or chroma key, insert it in a layer over the video. Then, simply apply the green screen feature. Use the color picker tool to make the green screen look smoother in case the shade of green doesn't match the program. You can also use the color picker to pick out other colors that aren't green. So say if you have a blue background, you can make it a blue screen instead. Or you know, pretty much the same thing to any other color. Just make sure the color is solid. Adjust any sliders to make the object or character fit in with the video better so their edges don't look fuzzy. As you might have guessed, you can make your own green screens and screenshots of your characters. Just pick a good background color that contrasts with them. While you can apply the green screen feature to the individual shots themselves, sometimes it's easier to make an entirely different project of the green screen, loop it for a decent amount of time, export that project as a video, and put it in your main project after putting in the green screen. In case the chroma key isn't working well for your screenshots, you can also try using an image editing software to edit out the background and export it as a transparent image. Just be aware this can be difficult if you have a lot of screenshots. When using transparent images, I'd actually recommend using Studio's screenshot feature. I know I said that it's probably better to use your own screenshot software, but if you edit Roblox Studio screenshots, you're likely to get less colored pixel on the edge of your image. And those are all the basics of the Riotblock stop motion style. Does all of this seem difficult and tedious to you? Congrats! Now you know how I feel! So maybe think twice before demanding that I make more Riotblocks videos. But hey! If you've been waiting for me to make this video, I hope it was helpful. Although chances are, during the time you've been waiting, you've learned how to animate in a much better style, so... Still, to those that want to try animating in this style, just remember, it takes some time, and a lot of creativity. 
good luck to those who wish to try out this style. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments.